Hey guys, this is Mitch, and it is once again Unboxing Day, and a merry one to you. It's amazing how often that particular holiday comes around. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to be putting this, of course, up on the Patreon as usual, and then shortly after that I expect to put this up on YouTube. Uh, I just want to kind of switch things up a little bit there. So let's get into it. There we go. That was kind of tight. All right. So this was, of course, inspired by uh, an auction on mycomicshop.com, as these tend to be. So this is the auction in question, which is a bunch of Spawn comics. Now you might say, okay, you, well, you've got that one because I've seen the revisit, and to which I say, correct, you have. <laughs> Some of these I do have. But it worked out to the point where the ones I didn't have uh, were still cheaper on a per-issue basis than if I'd ordered them separately, so it was just kind of still more efficient to get them this way. So, got number three, again, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven, and thirteen. So, yes, these ones I still have again, but... The auction went low enough that these ones still came in at value, I think. So, spawn number 20. This is at the beginning of the Greg Capullo era. Roughly the beginning. And actually, might as well go through these because they're going to come up one by one anyway. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So, the end of the Todd era. The beginning of Greg Capullo. And the Image X month. And this is when Spawn has a crossover with Harry Houdini. <laughs> Early era Greg Capullo is interesting because he doesn't look like this on Quasar. Or I guess he looks a little bit more like this on X-Force. Not too much. And then, yeah, he moves over to Spawn and, and it becomes kind of a more McFarlane style before he settles into his own thing, really. Yeah, I did not have this one back in the day. Actually, yeah, no, I was out on, on Spawn after I would say numbers... It's one of those Grant Morrison ones. I think the, the middle of the Grant Morrison ones, whatever that was, I guess a 17, when it, it, it seemed clear to me that Todd wasn't coming back anytime soon. It's just... He kind of was, but it's still, you know, it was the end. So let's... Here, we not much reason in opening these ones. Let's open the last. You see what I mean, though, about spawn covers not indicating what's going on in the issue? Like, can you tell what's going on in any of these? Maybe if you're, like, intimately familiar with spawn. I am not. So this is the last of the McFarlane before he relegates himself just to a guest spot guy. Is this still Todd? There's a special thanks to Greg Capullo, but I mean, like, that looks like Greg. This looks like Greg. This looks like Greg. Inked by Todd, but, you know. There's very little here that looks like Todd, specifically. Okay, this one, I suppose. I'm going to guess this is Todd, and he felt the need to take over on that one. Yeah, like... It looks like Greg Capullo did like three quarters of this kit, of this comic. All right. And then, of course, we have Spawn number 25. Well, we have Spawn number 26, which is, I believe, the usual team going forward of Greg Capullo penciling and Todd McFarlane inking. Yeah. He doesn't want to call himself the inker, though. It says the artist by Todd and Greg. And it's like, dude, these are very obviously Greg pages that you inked. Which is fine. Just call yourself the anchor. And then this is, of course, Image X Month, where image creators took over uh, the books of their co-founders for the one month. And this is the last one I needed. So this is Spawn by Mark Silvestri. Inks by Bat and Billy Tan. Yeah, it looks weird. It still looks a little bit McFarlane-y. Like, th things like Tremor. I think this is Tremor, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, his spawn is so weird. Because Todd has a tendency to put his face in shadow. Because he doesn't want to have to say specifically what's going on there. And Mark's just like, eh, fuck it, who cares. No, Image X Month is a weird time. Because uh, they traded, right? So Mark does spawn. That means Todd McFarlane does Cyberforce for an issue. I have that one. It's weird. And then you get Jim Lee trading with Eric Larson. So Eric Larson draws Wildcats. Jim Lee draws Dragon. Uh, maybe some of the worst stuff he's done. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, that's not the combo you'd think would happen. And then Jim Valentino trades off with Rob Liefeld because nobody else wanted to trade off with Jim Valentino. <laughs> So now we get into the singles, where I'm kind of padding around uh, the stuff I've already got. So, first up, we've got Wetworks Sourcebook. So this is the kind of thing where if I've got a free... If I have um, a week where I've got, like, two revisits, you know, a, a two-part story and something, and I've got to fill up the odd one, this could get slotted in, that sort of thing. Or maybe a couple of these. And this one's interesting because, I mean, that's that's some wills. They don't give you much of an indication who draws what in this particular one, I don't think. Okay, so here it is. So that's wills. This is Mother One by Nick Manabat. Of uh, Cybernary. The Cybernary backup. Oh, um, don't mind the... The hand. I just realized that was coming in. Um, I had an altercation with some hornets and thorns at the same time, unfortunately, yesterday. And the hornet stings, at least, don't hurt anymore. Uh, this sure as shit does, though. So <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, like I said, Nick Manabat of Cybernary, who had some wild shit. I, I was pretty sure Wills uh, was the one who kind of, like, brought him into image. You know, he, they're, they're both Filipino, so I don't want to just assume, but uh, I, bel I don't believe he did much apart from those two things. So this is Grail, who's one of them, one of the, the Wetworks guys, apparently, by early Ryan Benjamin. Not bad. Dozer by Dan Norton. Decent gun. Decent gigantic gun. You know. This one is... Other guy by Dan Norton. Jester. Claymore by Dan Norton. These aren't bad. For I don't know who you are, guys. These are these are actually pretty good. Uh, Pilgrim. <laughs> Brett Booth. That looks pretty good. When did this come out? This was... Oh, they're not going to tell me here. 94, which is still pretty early for Brad Booth. This is quite good. Oh, and this is what we really came for was the armory. This is, I'm guessing this is the goop. Yeah, the symbiote armor. And this is some sort of um, nanotech, I believe. That's what it looks like anyway. The Blood Queen? It is... Uh, T-1000s versus Vampire Werewolves by Scott Clark. Okay, I wondered. That looks like Nick Manabat, if I had to guess. That looks so good. This is definitely more Nick Manabat. Yeah, no, uh, not a bad crew he's got going here, really. A couple of guys borrowed from um, Jim Lee's studio, you know, with uh, Scott Clark and Brett Booth. But uh, the other guys he's got, not too bad. Next up, this one feels thick. Ah. Part one of the Jim Rugg Hulk comic. So this is Grand Design, Monster and Madness. I guess I can sort of move on to the next one here, too. Shaboom. You gotta, I mean, there, there's one of these that had like the Ed Piscor variant where he's doing the uh, Todd McFarlane Wolverine 
Hulk reflected in the claws thing, only it's the gray Hulk reflected in the claws, and it's the original Wolverine costume with like the, the button nose and everything. Um, so this is Jim Rugg's Hulk, where he goes through the entire history of the Hulk. And he's doing like his versions of particular styles. And it's great looking stuff. Not only is he doing his version of styles, he's trying to like copy like lettering. Oh, you had to ruin it with shit like that, but I mean it is Marvel. And he's got yeah, and and Jim Rugg is particularly adept at drawing doing notebook drawings with uh colored pens, which is what this is here by the looks of it. If not pencil crayon, it's hard to tell a little bit to be honest. I believe he usually uses pens though. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that could theoretically, because it's being done by Marvel, could have been done with just reprinting all sorts of stuff, but that would be boring. So he does his version of everything, which is like still very faithful to the original artwork, but yeah, like this is the John Byrne style. I think we've seen some Kirby. We've seen some of the in-between stuff. There's that. <laughs> which is kind of like Todd, only reinterpreted. And we saw his other leader before too, which was very old school. I guess this is the, the Todd leader. I never, I don't think I've seen it really. Yeah, see, this is the leader based on the old school design with the, just the tall forehead versus the Todd leader. A little bit of Jeff Purves. Should be getting to Dale Keown soon. There we go. Sam Keith version in here. It's some impressive stuff. Yeah, more Dale Keown. Yeah, because he, he doesn't do a bad approximation of most of these styles. I guess we'll have Liam Sharp in here somewhere. Oh, Gary Frank too, right? Yeah, and then we get an entire note section of where to find all the source material. So that will be, I think, and fun to look through. Okay, next one is Stormwatch source book. We had the Wetworks source book. You got to get the Stormwatch one now, right? Again, uh, filler stuff for if I have a, a free spot in the revisit schedule. So this one I don't expect to be quite as good, but uh, I think there's still one or two in here that are kind of interesting. So, starting off with some Ryan Benjamin, but uh, is that Ryan Benjamin? No. This is Ryan Benjamin. This is Richard Bennett. Okay. Some of this doesn't look bad, and then some of it really, really does. Like these hands. Eh, it's, it's not bad for the most part. I think he's pretty good these days, Richard Bennett. I mean, this, this is 30 years later, and he is still going. Battalion by Scott Clark. Not bad. Looks like an action figure. Diva. I think this is also by Scott Clark. Oh, they say on the things. Very nice. By Scott Clark. That's a nice picture. He's gotten a little better at uh, drawing her. When was this done? Is this also 94? It is 94. Okay. Hellstrike by Alex Garner. That's like one of the, uh, the two poses he can do at this point, I think. Looks nice, all the hatching. Cannon by Matt Broom. Nah, that looks okay. Oh, there's some... I was going to say there's some Jim Lee. That's Ryan Benjamin. You could still confuse the two these days. And this is Jim Lee here, apparently. It, it It's something Jim did in, in, you know, a couple of hours while he was waiting for the bus, I guess, but... Yeah, there's some okay stuff in there. As the is this covered by Dwayne Turner? I'm pretty sure that's who the guy is. Okay, next one is ah Marvel Universe Update eighty nine. I got a couple of these. I like the old Marvel Universe handbook stuff. 
And the updates uh, seemed interesting because this is like, you know, some of the later characters that I'm more familiar with. So, like Apocalypse, like Archangel, and these are Walt Simonson versions by the looks of it. They say they do say who. So this is Mark Silvestri here. Early Mark Silvestri. Who else is in here? John Romita Jr., Brett Blevins. Rob Liefeld does some Apocalypse. Really? Oh, maybe that one. That one. Yep. Definitely. So that page. Okay. Who else? Archangel. Walt Simonson did one of the pages for that, too. That's Walt. And so that makes that the Rob Liefeld page, then. Rather unimpressive. But I, I this, this is just starting out Rob, I believe. Although 89 is pretty close to New Mutants. Colleen Doran. Really? Ariel? This one here? Okay, yeah. It's always weird when you see Colleen Doran doing some Marvel work. Todd McFarlane. Black Box. Black Box or Black Fox? I, well, I mean, it's, it's this one here. Black Fox. I just read it wrong. Okay. Jim Lee. Box 4. So this is when Jim Lee was working on Alpha Flight. It does look... It looks decent. He put a bit into this. Yo, who did the Boom Boom? John Bogdanov. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. John Mina Jr. for Bullet and Bullseye. Yep, definitely JRJR. It's good stuff. Bushwhacker by Rick Leonardi. Yep. Yep, I believe you. There's a couple of these in here. I'll, I'll try to be kind of quick with them. For example. And this is Introducing Venom. Yeah. Who did this cover? John Byrne did the covers for the usual ones. Ron Friends. Okay. Okay, anybody doing... Ooh. Venom by Eric Larson. This is Todd stuff here. From the pages, though. That's when he almost looks like a Ninja Turtles character. And this is, of course, also Todd. This looks like maybe Mark Silvestri. Vertigo? Yep. Mary Jane by Eric Larson. All right, when he was a bit more restrained. I'm getting from all over the uh, spectrum here. And this is another Mark Silvestri. And then the last couple are also Silvestri, so... Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, and Zaladain. Good stuff. Okay, next up. Right. <laughs> um, I did actually order this not too long ago, and it was like $3. I was like, wow, that's so inexpensive. And then found out that it was because the first two pages have been torn out. These pages here. And then found that the that it wasn't nearly as expensive as I thought to um, get another copy. This was like $6 or something. It's like, eh, do I want, eh, 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 okay. Because it completes my Jim Lee collection uh, for Uncanny. The other one, like, you know, didn't quite, and it, that was, that was going to chafe. So this is, of course, the first time Jim Lee drew an uncanny X-Men comic. Next is Cerebus Remastered number one. So, they've been doing this recently. I, I read a lot of Cerebus back in the day, and I, I still have some fondness for the material. And there's a remaster of Spawn number 10, Cerebus number 4, which is the first appearance of Elrod, and this one here, Cerebus number 1. I can't get the, the Cerebus number 4 one. I'm guessing the availability is too low. But he has been doing this lately. Oh, that's odd. That's an early... That is an early sim drawing of something. 
Not something you would normally see out of him. This is interesting. This is a forward by Dave from March 6th of 2020. Man, he could have wrote that like a week later and it might have been fairly different. <laughs> so this here, I'll just read the conflicted responses. Where is the original artwork for the first drawing I ever created of Cerebus in January of 1977? Reproduced it left. Lost? Stolen? How pleased my 20-year-old self would be to see this. People will still be talking about this character I created more than 40 years from now. Some. Gene Day will be dead in less than five years. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. You will be in the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh. Denny will be long gone out of your life. Oh. <laughs> Remarried and then divorced. Yeah, the 300th issue will come out on schedule in 2004, which it did. You'll be a nearly universally hated outlaw, like Steve Ditko. Hmm. I don't think Steve Ditko is quite as controversial these days, but then Steve Ditko's been dead for a while. Maybe Dave, but I mean, Steve Ditko didn't say too many cancelable things. Neil Adams will like you and know your work. <laughs> That's great. You will never experience actual love. Aw. Barry Windsor Smith will paint a front and back cover for one of your reprint collections. That would be wild for his 20-year-old self. At the age of 50, you will be completely estranged from your family. You will still be making a living in comics in your 60s. You'll be an alcoholic and a drug addict for 20 years. You will become a conservative and a devout monotheist. You will never become genuinely wealthy or genuinely famous. A copy of Service Number 1 will sell for $10,600 in 2004. No famous person will ever be a fan of your work. <laughs> that would be, yeah, a little. Uh, so, yeah, put it in that perspective. It must be a little strange thinking back as Dave Sims sometimes. So this is all from the, I was going to say black and white. It, the, all, the entire Service Run is black and white. But this is on a higher grade paper. It's not on newsprint. It is a little clearer that way, so that's nice. And this is the original artwork here. Gene Day's Star Wars. And this is the introductory letter column. I, I appreciate that they put in everything that was in the first issue. Illustrations from comic graphics. They can make the difference. And this is from some early Dave Sim stuff from... Uh, what is it, like Dark Fantasy or Fantasia? I don't think this is Fantasia. Graphic Fantasy? Something like that. This is some looking back stuff. Th these are just drawings that Dave did in uh, 1977 with some... a little bit of uh, introspection. Yeah, okay, that's what this is. This is, so, Dave Sims' 1976 cover art for what would have been Aardvark Vanaheim's first fanzine, titled Cerebus, which was planned for fall of 1977 but never published. Note Dave Sims' first Cerebus illustration, which would have been printed on the front cover as the fanzine's mascot. The artwork for this fanzine was sent to the printer, but disappeared in the mail and was never recovered. Rather than dwell on the loss, Dave Sim took the Aardvark he created for the logo, bringing that character to life with his own title, Cerebus the Aardvark. And, of course, uh, it was Cerebus... Because somebody misspelled Cerberus. I forget who I made this illustration for in 1977. So this is old stuff he just has from that era. Cerebus model sheet, which is like almost like Mad Magazine type stuff. Wow, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of stuff in here I have not seen before. Drawing of Cerebus by Frank Thorne, who Dave Sim uh, kind of appreciated, but soon found out that you could get drawings out of Frank Thorne for, for no reason whatsoever, from what I understand. Yeah, magenta, cyan, and yellow make brown, right? I'll just guess at the percentages, and it'll look just like Frank Frazetta's Conan the Berserker painting. <laughs> Any reproduction of this print that doesn't include the color is fine by me. <laughs> I guess the color didn't go so well. I don't remember uh, seeing how that looked. And this, oh, this is Dave Sim 2010 reimagining of the first two pages. Yes, the lettering is quite a bit better because that is one of the things Dave got 
uh, best at, I would say. He became a bit of a trailblazer for lettering, to be honest. Like, it, it was, his lettering got to be so good and uh, very emotive in that, you know, he'll switch up the punctuation. I can't serve you here, you're, and then he gets his, he gets threatened, I believe, at that point. And doing nice approximations of the backgrounds, like this is a, this is more than he could manage back in 1977. You know, different angle, yeah, very dramatic now. Got quite a bit better at the shading. Interesting marks with the brush. This looks like he's go, he's sort of reinterpreting his Barry Windsor Smith days because he used at the beginning he would copy Barry Windsor Smith's style as much as he could so he's kind of doing that here just for a laugh I think that's good stuff and then <laughs> the service number one cover only with starring service from service number 300 and then some ads that's fun stuff a lot of bonus stuff in there. A lot of bonus stuff I wasn't expecting. I don't know what I was expecting exactly. I honestly don't know how he's doing some of these updated drawings. Some of these are from 2020, which is... Um, I, actually, I don't think that does predate his injury to his wrist. At some point, his wrist pretty much imploded uh, where he can't draw anymore. From what I understand, and I don't think he can. There's a there's a procedure that he can really do to fix it. So there is some stuff from the last like from like 21 or 22 that is drawn by Dave, and I'm not sure how he's managing it. Okay, next we got. Okay, this is the last of the Marvel Universe updates. That looks like Todd. I'm, I'm wrong. It's Eric Larson. My bad. A lot of John Byrne in this one. Yeah. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. And I think we've seen enough of the Marvel updates for now. But uh, yeah, no, I, I like these. Um, you do get a lot of artists and it's there's a lot of information. Also, it's been sort of bandied about that I might do um, um, one of these kind of updates for as, as a commission. Um, nothing concrete just yet, but... Um, good to have some reference material in case that happens. I actually ordered these and now I forget which order they are because that's what it's like living in my head. Next up, ah, X-Men Annual number six. I think there was a lot of, of X-Men Annuals and I'm like, on, on mycomicshop.com and I'm like, man, that'd be cool to have those. And I ended up looking at them and I go, wait a minute, those aren't expensive. So this is... Before the days where it was all, uh, where the annuals were anthologies, um, and you had different stories by different creators, this uh, is like 48 pages all by Chris Claremont and Bill Sienkiewicz. And this is a carryover from, I believe, Uncanny, like 162, something like that, where Storm became a vampire. And so this is sort of the continuation of that. Nice cover, too. I like that one. Next up, Uncanny Annual number 7. This is a John Romita Jr. cover. Again, if they're, if they're inexpensive and they're good, why not get them, right? Is this J.R.J.R. JR doing the art? Doesn't look like it. Um... This is Galactus invading the X-Mansion, apparently. Who drew this? Ah, this is, yeah, no. See, this is the thing. I'm not familiar enough, but this is Michael Golden. My bad. This is quite a bit of Michael Golden. And it's like, it looks kind of like Art Adams a little bit, only more cartoon. And, I, you know, like I said, I don't have enough experience with Michael Golden to just be able to pick it out of a lineup yeah that's cool looking stuff though that's yeah again a whole issue of Michael Golden stuff with Chris Claremont that seems all right to me next up Stormwatch number nine 
And this is just a case of this being the next one um, that isn't available on capcan.com, which is the other one I, I order from regularly. Ryan Benjamin doing the pencils. Okay. HK Proger. Well, at least it's not Brandon Choi. So be interesting to see if somebody else can do a decent job. Early Ryan Benjamin. Trying his damnedest to be Jim Lee. So it comes a little bit close. This is a nice presentation. Like this is the 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 stock of the paper and the color all works together nicely. Who does the color on this? Joe Chiotto. All right. Yeah, not bad at all. Introducing Defile. Next up, Wildcat Special number one. This is one I wanted for a little while and for some reason didn't get. And this is very early Travis Charay. Written by Brandon Choi, I take it. Steve Gerber. Okay, that's better. And this is when Travis Charay was still drawing uh, more like Jim Lee. Everybody drew like Jim Lee back in the day, you know? Yeah, and this is all Travis Charest, so that's some interesting stuff. And I wonder if he works anything out over the course of the issue? I would guess probably not. Although some of the... Some of the faces look like they're getting a little bit away from Jim Lee by the end of this. I don't know. Yeah. That looks a bit more like him, but uh, not, not this other stuff. Some Tom Rainey. Richard Johnson. Not really familiar, but inked by Kevin Nolan. Nice composition, too, with the slight Dutch angle and the, the low angle. All of the, the pipes leading in and the Kevin Nolan inks just makes everything look fantastic. This is not bad at all. This is very nice. Cool. And lastly, we have X-Men number 250. And I think the thinking behind this one was I have 249. I have 248 now, which is the first Jim Lee one, and so I might as well kind of just continue it. And this is during, yeah, this is during the Mark Silvestri era. I think this is uh, at the beginning of the era in which they were going bi-weekly. Um, because, yeah, I would not uh, expect this to be at the end of the bi-weekly era because there's still a fair amount of detail. I've seen some of those last ones. Uh, they're, those are fucking dashed out. There's some good stuff in them. We still got a little bit of early era Betsy Braddock. Is this all Mark Silvestri? Yeah. Steve Lealoa as the inker. All right, interesting. That is that is a different look. There's early Polaris. Good stuff. Yeah, that's good shit. All right, so that is it for this one. And, of course, we know by the Marvel update that that's Zaladane now. <laughs> so, yeah, kind of all over the place. My orders get a little schizophrenic sometimes because I just get into a place where um, I'm often working off of the, the auctions that are available and going, okay, so, you know, I'll look through the issues that are on auction and go, so what what of these could I get if I could, can't get the auction? Because I probably, I probably don't want to, <laughs> you know? <laughs> What looks reasonable here? And then you start filling up your your cart based on that. And then just following tangents, going, what else is in here? What? A, oh, wait, this reminds me of this. And, like, for instance, Wildcat's source book, has, or uh, special number one, has been in uh, on my list for a little while. And I keep forgetting to actually add it in. That kind of thing. But, yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I'll, I'll put up the, there's a, there's a supplemental order coming soon, filling in some of these gaps uh, and also, you know, going down some other rabbit holes because that's always fun. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.